does this mean? What does this mean? It's so bright, it's so vivid. It's so bright and vivid. A full-on quadruple rainbow across the sky comes to us from Perez Hilton's ass. Hey, boys. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome comedian actor David Koechner. David. Oh. Oh. Hey, how are you, Danny? I'm good. Uh, did I wake you? Oh, I'm sorry. I was asleep, wasn't I? I'm sorry. I, was, I came in here to do the chat, and I fell asleep. <laughs> Your brother's in town with his kids, and I can't sleep anywhere. <laughs> Quiet! Uh, Dave. I'm doing a TV show! How did you come up with the idea? I'm sorry, what is it? How did you come up with the idea for doing these flower shop videos? Oh, uh, it's just, uh, they're based in reality, uh, so it's kind of a reality-based comedy routine uh, from actual events of my life. Well, they're very funny. Uh, thank you, David. Let's roll the clip. Hi. Hi. How are you? Well, you? Good. I'd like a bouquet of red roses for okay. my wife. All right. And I would like the card. You always do the card. Oh, sure. Yeah, I'd like the card to read, f you and f your family. <laughs> Wait. Oh, oh, I know. Do this. Okay. New card, right. Write, f you. OK. OK. And then get another card. And it'll be just behind that card in the envelope, and it'll say, <clears throat> and f your family. <laughs> so when she gets it, she opens it up like, f you, ooh. And then she sees the next one, ba boom, and f your family, too. <laughs> and then the flowers would be like, oh, I thought there was something good, but it's kind of like the third f you, because then she realizes, oh, these are sarcastic flowers. <clears throat> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just gonna put those away. Throw those away. Write um, um, to my loving wife. I'm so happy that your family is visiting for the holidays. All right. Love, David. <laughs> hey, Kristen. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, what's your short about? It's me making fun of my bitch persona on the hills. People call you a bitch? Super bitch. All right, that is not true. You are an angel. Let's watch. Hello, I'm Kristen Cavallari, and welcome to Unsolicited Advice, starring me. Since I know how to get what I want, I'm offering my unsolicited advice to celebrities and political figures in the news. Let's see what's going on. <clears throat> Obama's having problems getting this health care thing passed. He keeps asking the Republicans for help. Well, that's a loser move. If you ask nice, you ask twice. Oh, God, people will not shut up about the whoring around of John from John and Kate Plus 8. If I were Kate, I'd change my name to Catherine and throw that dork's collection of Ed Hardy <laughs> in the yard and then light it on fire. Funny people opens this week. Being funny is just how ugly people get laid, right? My advice to funny people, get different genetics and quit being so desperate. Here's some advice for golfers. After you sink the putt, Fill in the hole. You want the next guy to be f don't you? Sarah Palin, no advice for you, girl. Guess it's time for viewer mail. My mom can't come to my half birthday party because her boyfriend is in the hospital. Should I be cool with this? Half birthdays are incredibly important. You need to send a card that says, I hope he dies in time for you to make it. Love your daughter. I've just gotten into acting and I'm attending my first premiere. Any tips on getting noticed? That's a toughie. The vag flash used to work, but so played out. Whoever's the first to figure out how to flash your butthole, I'd say you're gonna get a lot of attention. Okay, I'm out. I have to go give people dirty looks at a restaurant opening. Hey, buddy. Hi, Daniel, are you there? Hello. Yeah, Fred, I'm here. How's it going? Hello. <laughs> Fred, how are you? I hear you. Am I supposed to see you? I don't see, I, I see nothing here. Fred, we I, see- I think the microwave might be interfering with this thing. No, I'm positive it's not that. 
Fred, tell us about- I can't hear you, and I can't see anything. <laughs> Maybe if I talk louder. This is working. Did the cat play around with this camera? Uh, Fred. I want to tell him about the little video I made about my celebrity photos. It's pretty unique. <laughs> well, here's the book. Okay, Fred, please, tell us about your clip. <laughs> here's a minute with Fred Willard. When I started out as an actor, I realized I was getting very self-involved. And a friend of mine said, Fred, get a hobby. Buy a camera. You're going to meet a lot of celebrities over the years. Take pictures. They'll be cherished memories. And sure enough, two weeks later, I was in Times Square, and I met Charlie Chaplin. I said, sir, would you honor me by taking a photo? Which he took with his trembling hands, and I still value this picture today. Uh, I got a lot of pictures here. I, Christopher Walken I met in a restaurant in Toronto. He took a picture, interrupted his meal. Here's me meeting Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who's a heck of a lot taller than I thought he was. And you see, I was staring at his belt buckle, which said, world's champion something. Uh, there's a picture of me the day my daughter was born, which I'll always remember. Tom Hanks was at the hospital, and I asked him to take that picture. He was very gracious. And here's a beauty. John Lennon took a picture of me and Yoko Ono. It's not the Yoko Ono, but it's another uh, Yoko Ono. Mr. Now, Willard, we don't mean to intrude. We are such big fans. Uh, we watched you last night through your bedroom window. But we didn't want to trouble you. That's all right. Yeah. Well, could we trouble you now for a picture? Sure. Yeah. There you go. And <laughs> have a nice day. <laughs> Whenever someone pitches a joke that I don't like, they have to get up on a table and dance their heart out for one minute. Now, there's one writer who gets particularly upset whenever he has to do this, and for good reason. He appears to have scoliosis, or rickets. Possibly both. Who wrote, my God, right in the head? That was me. All right, that's not even a joke. I get on the table. Three, two, one. I am sure you all agree that was painful. I felt so bad for him and his family that I hired a new writer named Chris just to help him get his groove back. No, <laughs> I'm sorry, you know the rules. You, that was funny. <laughs> That's not how you check for lumps. They use two fingers. <laughs> Looks like somebody got an advanced copy of Rock Band Titties. You think that's bad? After this, he put on Alejandro by Lady Gaga. Oh. Big deal. That guy's playing the bongos. I know for a fact Tommy Lee has a whole drum kit like that at his house. Two, three, four. out there. But what works best for you is Daryl being Daryl. The world wants to know, are you ready to give another shot? Yes, I am. Well, you're gonna get that shot on the greatest talk show of all time. It's our studio! Hall! Welcome to 
to a very special recreation of the Arsenio Hall show. Uh, let's find out who the dog pound is tonight. There they are. Whoa, 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 whoa. Those are people who wish the Jeff Dunham show was still on the air. No, no, that's not what we are. My first guest is a young comic who is taking the country by storm. He's making his network television debut right here, right now. Please welcome Mr. Daryl Blewett. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I went to the mall and there was this real fat white lady trying on a Mickey Mouse shirt. I'm a black guy and even I thought that she was too fat. <laughs> uh, she was so fat when she put the shirt on, Mickey Mouse got diabetes. <laughs> I mean, Mickey had a cambo toe. <laughs> I was like, if you need a top, honey, get over to the sports chalet camping section. <laughs> Beans and cornbread! Beans and cornbread! Beans and cornbread! Thank you, and good night. Let me ask you a question. You've been in Hollywood, you've been working on your craft, how has this total experience been for you? Oh, it's been awesome, man. It's been great. And, and meeting you has even been even better, you know. Dreams can come true and prayer, you know, do change things, you know. It you does. Know, do. And you keep working hard on your craft. Touch that. You're number one, brother, in my book. Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh, Arsenio still got it. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, did you buy that suit off the rack? It is wonderful. Thank you. Hey, why'd you pre-record all your apologies? Well, it was just something that came up and, uh, you know, I thought it'd be a good idea. Well, we're excited to have you on our show, and thanks for the clip. Thank you. Thanks for having me. How you guys doing? It's going to be a busy season. I figured I'd get all my future apologies out of the way right now, so let's begin. I would like to apologize to my teammates and the coach for my excessive celebrations. I guess I'm the only one that gets excited. I would like to apologize for the Joe Buck show. Someone needs to apologize for that show. I'm sorry to ESPN Sports Center for dominating your highlights all the time. I know I'm really awesome and I make awesome plays, but in interest of fairness, you gotta show other people. Sorry about Windows Vista. It's not the operating system I thought it would be. I apologize for the stock market, the housing market, and the cash-only policy at most farmers markets. To the fans of M. Night Shyamalan, I'm sorry for everything after six cents. I'm sorry for that touchdown dance where I had sex with your girlfriend. That was really rude. Remember when we were slow dancing to Chris DeBerg's masterpiece, Lady in Red, and suddenly smelled like farts? And I tried to blame it on the couple next to us? Well, guess what? It was me, and I apologize. <laughs> Give me the ball. I'm always open. Thank you to Ed Sheeran. Cheers, mate. Up next in our Tiny Desk concert series is America's original viral sweetheart. Please welcome Miss Rebecca Black. When are we supposed to beg people for money when we have a concert going on every two seconds? <laughs> hey. Knock it off! Take it down a few notches, you big gorilla. My apologies, Rebecca. The NPR Tiny Desk Office Band is really amped to see you. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Okay, let's start off with one of your songs. Uh, how about Call Me Maybe? That was Carly Rae Jepsen. Huh, okay. 
Gangnam style. No. Harlem shake. No. Pants on the ground. No. What does the fox say? No, no. Shallow. Yes, that was me and Bradley Cooper. Okay. No, I'm the girl who sang Friday. Ooh, not a fan. Do you have any new music? Yes, I do. Did you write the lyrics? To Friday? Uh-huh. No. Can you give me a dollar amount on that song? No. Do you know what it is? No. I'm curious. I mean, it was, it was, was it pretty good, right? For a 13-year-old, it has to be huge. It's fine. Buy a car type of money? I did. Okay. <laughs> Not to rehash uh, too many bad memories, but what were some of like the crazy things people would write out to you? Everything. People are really good at pinpointing things that you don't like about yourself that you don't even know you don't like about mm -hmm. yourself until somebody says it. Do you blame me for making people aware of the video? Or do you give us credit for making it? I do give you credit. Or you give us credit All for the time. it. We were obviously, let's not, you know, we weren't like, oh my God, this is the, the greatest song in the world. We were like, look at this, this is insanity. I mean, it was a little bit insane. I mean, some of the lyrics are silly. Yeah. Chicken in the front seat. Who did your favorite cover of Friday? I think Jimmy Fallon. If I couldn't tell a joke, I would do it. That's what I would say to him. He wouldn't remember. Too drunk. I'm teasing. He's, yeah, you will not. What do you feel when you listen to Friday now? It's cute. You ever been out somewhere and they like people like play it yes. just, just to torture you? I was in the gym uh -huh. in a workout class. And uh, yeah, he played Friday and I was like, please. That happens to me in Spins class. They'll always put on my comedy albums. Oh. That's Soul Cycle. And I'm like, come on, guys. Play the next track. I like it better. <laughs> How come Fridays, the restaurant, never uh, gave you an endorsement. That's a great question. I also, I'm not a big fan of them ever since they switched from TGI. I always liked saying TGI they did? Fridays. Well, you know why they took it out? I think because, because it says of, God? Yep. Mm. And then stupid people in the South are like, are they, is that restaurant using God's name in vain? We're gonna go get our tater skins over at Bennigan's. <laughs> now, I understand you haven't performed Friday in over 13 years. That's not true. Here to perform Friday live. For the first time in over 13 years, I, 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 so excited. Take it away, Rebecca Black. One, two, three. It's Friday, Friday. Gotta get down on Friday. Everybody's looking forward to the weekend, weekend. Party and party and yeah. Party and party and yeah. Fun, 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 fun. Looking forward to the yesterday. Thursday. Thursday. Mm -hmm. Today it is Friday. Friday. Come on, thank you. We, we, we so excited. We so excited. I don't want this weekend to end.